So, uh, so the question becomes, what can you learn from a 15-year-old boy? I'm 14, actually, I turned 15 in two months. But um, what can you learn from a 10th grader? What can you learn from someone who hasn't been to college? What can you learn from someone who hasn't been out there in the quote-unquote real world? But what I can do is give you a 30,000 foot view on the big picture as opposed to a one foot view on the specific details. Now in the next ten, five to 10 minutes, I'll be going into details onto how you effectively deliver your message or story. Now the reason why I felt like I can talk about this and I'm qualified to do so is because I had a story. And what gives me the qualifications for this is I created something that would let me tell that story. I created a social organization, it's called My Name, My Story. It essentially gives people a chance to share their stories of inspiration and whatnot. But what I did with my own story of struggle, victory, etc., is put it into a model, essentially a business model, that would allow not only me, but other people to get involved and tell their own stories. So, how exactly did I do so? We put together a website, we put together a business model, we put together leaders, people who could join our team, our network, etc. And now we've been blessed after 365 days to be viewed in 84 countries and 50 states in the United States of America. And it's really nice. Along with that, I, um, I uh, did studies with communication and debate in uh, two top schools, one at Harvard, one at UCLA. And uh, I've been to business meetings, all of you have. And um, so it's been nice. I've, I've, I've retained a lot of information from that. And so I don't tell you this to tell you what I've done, but I've told, I'm telling you this how I realize how I create my story and how I can do something with what I've been gifted with and the things that I have. So my main message today is to share with you a few points that hopefully can help you tell your story in business better than the rest of them. So why do we tell our story in general? Why do people decide to join a business? Why do people decide to invest in a product? Does any, I, I, someone raise their hand and answer. <laughs> adds value to their life. It adds value to their life, exactly. But how do you communicate that's something that'll help you, apparently, because when someone buys your own product, you get some money from it, or your corporation gets money from it. You need to tell them why they believe what you believe, not why they want what you have. There's a clear-cut difference. There's three paradigms. It's if I had a whiteboard, I'd draw it for you. There's three big circles. There's one that says what, the other that says how, and the middle one that says why. Normally, people go from what? All right, so I have um, some, uh, the computer. Um, how did I make this computer? I put some parts together, and why I did it? Because I was uh, excited to do it, and I wanted it to be cool. No one's going to buy it. Flip that. Do what Steve Jobs did. He said, I want to be innovative. I want to challenge the status quo. I want to do something that no one has done before. I want to question further what has already been questioned. How am I going to do that? I'm going to get a team together. At first, I'm going to work myself. I'm going to look at all the different parts of technology. I'm going to put them in my room, and I'm going to figure out how to do this whole thing. And now I have a system in place. I have a system of people working for me, and I have a, sy a system of how ideas are generated. And what is that? A sleek new iPhone, a nice MacBook Pro, this little thing called Apple TV. Which one would you buy? The one before or the one after? Exactly. Because he didn't tell you what he had before he told you why he had it. He told you why he does what he does, and then told you how he does it, then told you what he has. And if you believe what he believes, then you will invest in what he's doing. Same with any business. If you find people who believe in what you believe, then they will partake in what you do. So let's go over the four main points of telling your story. I'm going to constantly use two examples, Martin Luther King Jr. and Steve Jobs. And I'm going to cross apply the two and show you how similar the two are. The first thing is personalize your story. So when you're giving your two-minute elevator pitch to someone, it should not be, well, um, you can make $129,000 a year. You can have uh, a lot of products to sell. You can, uh, you know, do, you can, you know, we've done this, this, and this. I can give you six billion 
we've been in every country in the world, we've done this and this and this. No, no, no. Personalize it to yourself. There should be a particular reason why you are talking, and they should know that particular reason. For example, Martin Luther King Jr. used numerous examples of his own life in his speeches or in conversation. He did not use numerous examples of the things going around in the world, even though there were so much going around in the world at the time. He used examples of his own kids, his own family, the own things that happens at his areas of work, his community, as opposed to using everything around it. People don't understand what you're saying if you make it so general. If you keep telling them that we're in every country in the world, if you keep telling them that I've made this much money, they don't care unless it's personal to you. So in any business, whether it be here or in a job situation, you want to personalize your story in order to be effective in that way. Moving forward to the second point, use powerful words. There's a difference between saying you like something and you love something. This does not mean romance, this means love as in an appreciation for something more than just a liking for something. Now, if you were in an elevator and uh, you vote work for Steve Jobs, and you were sitting there and you saw this guy and he had a Mac, he had one of those, some other tablet, he had a tablet that was not an iPad. And you were there like, I'm, I'm gonna sell this guy, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna get him, I'm gonna get him so bad. And you said, I think that you should probably invest in Apple because it has bang, 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 bang features. All the features in the world, all the amazing things that it has. All the amazing pixels on its camera, the amount of apps that it has, the benefits, the sleek look, everything about it. Is that the best way to go? <coughs> then use different wording, maybe. Over my past five years working with the Apple Corporation, I have met new friends, I have developed strong connections with my coworkers, I have learned so much from my boss, and the things that I have done have helped me in all areas of my life. And then when I started using the products of Apple, it changed me. It changed, it I realized that it questioned the status quo. It was not just another t piece of technology, it was something that could make a difference in my life. It could help me in this, this, and this ways, and this is how it did it. Bang, 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 all these features. Now here, here's a $500 iPad. I guarantee you he'd buy it on the second one. There's a difference between you're making money and you're becoming wealthy. Right, when you're becoming wealthy, you have it all. You have the ability to donate money, you have the ability to receive money, you have the ability to control money, you understand money, you're a humble person. When you're just making money, you're kind of repulsive. A majority of the people, of the businessmen, that say that all they do in a live, for their living is make money are repulsive people. The most successful people, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation donates to basically every charity in the nation, in the world probably. Steve Jobs, I know, does the same. And even though he has passed away, his legacy continues because of the things that he did. If you ask anyone, they'll tell you Steve Jobs was a very, very harsh boss. He was very difficult. But what he realized was that he was challenging the status quo. And he made that clear to each and every one of his employees that he was challenging the status quo and that is how you were gonna sell my product. Not just I'm selling technology. Moving on to the, the uh, third portion. Be transparent and honest. When dealing with people, people wanna talk to someone who are transparent and honest. Do I look like I'm sugarcoating anything? No. And there's a reason for that. Because you're not going to believe me if I put my ego in front of me and forget who I am. One thing that you want to do every time you meet someone is tell them something about you so that you can get a response about them. Whenever you're meeting people, think about it. You go up to somebody and go, hey, how are you? I'm, 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 I'm good, how are you? I just wanted to, uh, I, what, are you, what are you buying here? Are you, uh, you're, at the, you're at the baby session. What, what, do, you have, do you have kids yourself? The, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a stranger. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Well, well personally for me, I, I actually have a baby. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I, new, new time, you know, I'm just 
pick up some diapers. Do you recommend one? He responds, uh, well, yeah, actually, I mean, those are pretty good. And then you get in a conversation. Because you told him something about you that he wouldn't have known unless he really had to delve deep into inside your quote-unquote life. You need to tell them something that will get them to understand who you are. That is why when you are out there doing business, you have to be transparent and honest by personalizing your stories and using that passionate why approach <laughs> as opposed to the what approach. You need to be clear as, as water. They should know who you are, clearly, even if it's over the phone. You know a lot of people say that you need to, some people need to get up and start walking around with the phone. They can't do it sitting down when they're making business deals. Why is that? Because those are usually, usually the best salesmen. Because they have to get their passionate sense into that. They have to get them to know who they are. As they're walking around, they're basically having a conversation with them. They're telling them who they are, essentially. And that's how you need to act when talking to people directly. You need to tell them who you are. And you need to be passionate about it. Which moves me on to my last point and most important point is for be passionate. 